Hi there, welcome back to another painting tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint a campfire. So you can screenshot the sketch and trace it if you'd like, and let's get started. So let's start with a size 12 flat brush, and we wanna do the background first. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this teal, pale teal color and mix it in with some gray which is just a Payne's gray and titanium white. And I'm gonna put that in the background. Also tape off your edges with some masking tape. And I wanna see if I can do this without losing my sketch completely. Try to get close to the edges of the tape and see if you can make some smooth transitions with the paint. Okay, so that's all right for a start. Put a little bit more right there. Try to cover up um, as much of the white of the paper as you can. And now let's move to the lower part. And that's gonna be a much darker gray. So we could do just a Payne's gray and try to get quite a bit of water and see if we can do this part of the painting. It's gonna be tricky to not paint over the sketch here but I'm going to try maybe just to go around it like that. Because when you paint a fire, it's going to, it's very light, bright color. So it would be good to have that white of the paper showing through to kind of give it a glowing effect. Just keep going and paint in your background. Again, we're getting close to the edges. And I'm just trying to go kind of around the fire, not too close. And I'm getting enough water on the brush so that the paint is applied evenly and smoothly as much as I can. Okay, so I think that looks good. Maybe go over one more time with a little bit more of a watery wash mix. Just try to get all those white areas. Okay, so now for the foreground, I want to do a gray color. It's a little bit lighter, so just mix some white with your Payne's Gray and try to put in the foreground. And we can go try to, again, try to go around your sketch as much as you can. If you wanna have smooth lines, you wanna use more paint. I tend to use the least amount of paint as possible and sometimes it gets the better of me. That's why you can get some streaks it usually means you're just not using enough paint. And you can add the water, but sometimes that doesn't always work because the water breaks down the acrylic paint. I'm just gonna go over this again, just to give it a little bit more of a smooth finish. Okay. So that looks good. And now let's put in the dark values of the stones. So we can go with a black color for that. You can take black and maybe a little bit of Payne's gray. And then I'm just gonna put in the stone shapes that we had sketched. 
and it's kind of hard to see where they were. And this is an underpainting as well. So it's okay if it's not perfect. And rinse off your brush and then let's put in the dark color for the logs. You can just take the darkest brown that you have, which actually for me might be this um, raw umber. And then use that edge of your flat brush to build up the logs. And it's so easy to do with that shape of the flat brush. Okay, so then we need to let that dry. And I see a couple white places that I might just want to try to carefully cover up with that gray paint. Okay, and then let that dry. So let's put in the mountains in the background. So you want to mix another color to do that. We could take, we can make kind of a greenish shade so we can mix some ultramarine blue with sap green. Mix those together and it should give us a fairly dark green. It's a little tricky to get the right balance so it's not too blue. Let's try that. And just moving with your sketch which again is a little bit hard to see. You can paint right over that tape and then carefully just like wiggle the brush and that should give you a nice shape for the mountains, the background, the distance. And then try to get close to this edge so that we don't have any white spots and close to the edge of the tape. Okay, so you can let that part dry. And then after that dries, we might do a second coat on a few things and we'll come back after it dries. Okay, so now that that has dried a little bit, let's take the flat brush dip it into this pale green, and then let's put a little bit of a shoreline along the mountains. And then I'm gonna kind of get, rinse that off and then use that damp brush to just blend that a little bit. And I could add maybe a little bit of lighter value in the water just to create the illusion of some waveforms. Just to give a little bit of interest to the painting, make it a little more dynamic. So there's a little bit more going on. Now I can take a dark gray, maybe a Payne's gray with a little bit of white. And I wanna try to make shadows for these rocks so they have to be a little bit of a darker value than the background so let's try to make that darker and see if i can just make like some shadows there and then i want to add a little bit of texture to this foreground so you could take a filbert brush i have a size two here and you can take different shades, uh, maybe take a little bit of brown and just put some dots kind of in a random manner and that can kind of act like stones in the foreground. So we did brown, we could do just some Payne's gray. Again, just try to make it super random. Just kind of making like pebble forms and then I could switch to maybe a white and then put that in and it's going to mix with the other colors that we have because they're still wet and we'll just kind of put those in however we feel like it. And you can see that just gives a little bit of texture. 
Let's stick with this same brush and get a lighter value of gray. So we can take a little bit of the Payne's gray, mix it with a little bit of titanium white, and then let's put in a lighter values for the stones. And just think about where you could put it. Maybe one side is a little bit lighter than the other. And you can kind of use the edge of the brush maybe to make a little bit more of a linear kind of shapes just for texture. And you don't have to go too detailed with that. So the next thing we can do is um, let's put in some of the shapes for the fire and let's switch brushes. So I want to switch a good brush for painting the flames is going to be a round brush. This is a size six. So now that I'm going to switch to the flames, I'm actually going to switch water, switch out the water. You can see this has gotten, I don't know if you can see it, it's gotten pretty black. So switch it to a clear water. That's why it's good to always have a couple of water pots that you could switch up. Just because if we don't, then these colors are going to get pretty muddy and we want them to be really light and bright. So this is a trick here. I'm going to try to put titanium white as a base for this. So let's see if I can find my sketch and paint in the flames in a white color to start with. because I want this to show up over that dark background. Okay, I think that worked pretty good. Okay, so now I can think about some other colors for the flames. We could start with a light yellow, so maybe mix a little bit of lemon yellow with some white. And then let's put that in. And you want to be kind of random. You can kind of see here it shows you that that yellow is not going to show up on top of that Payne's gray that we put in. And then I can come all the way down here. So if you do the white first and then try to let it dry, then you might be able to put some yellow on top and have it actually show up. Okay, so the yellow looks good, and you can think about what other colors are in there. So we might do some orange. Maybe mix some orange with a little bit of the white. And then put that in, kind of around, mix it around the, um, the yellow. And then we can put it on one side of the rock is that those rocks are really reflecting the colors from the, the flames. If you paint on top of the logs, that's okay. And we'll just try to get around here. So I might, what I might have to do is put another layer of that white. So once that has dried, I'm gonna go over it again and see if I can bring it up a little more. Okay, and then let's switch over to a spotter brush. This is a fine detail spotter brush. And I'm going to try to bring in some of the darker values of the fire. So we might do, let's try a Payne's Gray. And then see if we can go in carefully with that darker value. And just give a little bit of a definition to the fire and to some of our flames. And you could even put it in the middle of where you have the yellow. And that's kind of like a negative painting effect. It's going to look as if that's where the fire is moving around. Maybe put some darker colors down here at the bottom. Okay, and then I would take maybe some of the yellow now and then see if I can put it up here 
If you kind of move it around that white, you can see how it kind of, it allows the yellow to show up on top of that dark background where otherwise it might not have shown up. Okay, and then I could put, I can take this brush and use the white and then let's see if we could just do like some little smaller marks and kind of dance those around. As the fire, um, sometimes it kind of splinters and it makes sparks, so you have that effect. And then I could take more white and then go back in and go over some of this other color. And that's just gonna really make the fire pop and really make it glow. And think about your shapes, try to make them as random as possible. Don't want anything here looking too uniform. Okay, and you might do, oops, um, you might put a little bit of white paint on some of those rocks as like kind of a highlight for those rocks as well. Okay, so I think that's done. We'll call that done. You can go back and refine it if you would like, but we'll call that one complete. So let's take off the tape. And we'll just carefully pull it down and away. See if we can pull it down and away. And then over here. Okay, so the painting's done. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give this a try. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more painting tutorials from me, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!